In the couple of minutes that remain, I want to look at one such deprivation, the loss of the right to vote, and would like to think about the impact of felon disenfranchisement as a byproduct of racism in the workings of U.S. democracy. In the U.S., imprisoned populations, except perhaps in the states of Vermont and Maine, lose the franchise, either temporarily or permanently. 5.3 million people have lost their right to vote, temporarily or permanently. Among black men, the figures are even more dramatic. Almost 2 million black men, or 13% of the total population of black adult men. In some states, one out of every four black men is barred from voting. The historical period, which witnessed a significant expansion of felon disenfranchisement, uh, and I see some of the students in my uh, seminar theories of slavery here. So we'll be talking about uh, 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 this process that we have actually begun already. Um, the, the expansion of felon disenfranchisement laws happened in the post-Civil post War era. Uh, in fact, the 13th Amendment, which, le only, which legally and perhaps only legally ended slavery, designated convicts as the exception, right? But the 14th Amendment, which guaranteed all persons equal protection of the law, also contained an exception. Section 2 permitted states to withdraw suffrage rights from those who were engaged in, and I'm quoting, rebellion or other crime. Many southern states passed laws that linked those crimes that were specifically associated with black people to disenfranchisement, while those associated with white people did not result in the withdrawal of the right to vote. And therefore, in states such as Mississippi, there was the ironic situation that if you were convicted of murder, you retained your voting rights. But if you were convicted of miscegenation, you lost the right to vote. So I don't have time, of course, to develop an extended analysis of the historical development of the current practices of felon disenfranchisement. So I'll point to uh, sociologists um, Jeff Manza and Christopher Eugen's findings that between 1850 and 2002, states with larger proportions of people of color in their prison populations were more likely to pass laws restricting their right to vote, which leads them to conclude, and I'm quoting, that there is a direct connection between racial politics and felon disenfranchisement. When we ask the question, they say, of how we got to the point where American practice can be so out of line with the rest of the world, they write, the only plausible answer we can supply is that of race. And so I wish to remind us all that it can be confidently argued that the Bush presidency was precisely enabled by the relegation of a large majority black population of free individuals to the status of civil death. George W. Bush won the Florida elections in 2000 by a tiny margin of 537 votes. As Congressman John Conyers has pointed out, the fact that 600,000 ex-felons were denied participation in the elections in the state of Florida alone, quote, may have literally changed the history of this nation. We might thus argue that the deep structural life of racism in the U.S. prison system gave us the president who articulated the collective fears linked to a psychic historical reservoir of racism in order to wage wars on the peoples of Afghanistan and Iraq under the guise of combating terror. Thank you very much. <laughs>